hey, why does everyone keep quitting the company? What's what's going on? I, I honestly don't know. It seems like a great company to work for and, and you seem really nice. Well, here's the freaking data set. You have one hour to tell me why everyone keeps quitting or you're going to be fired. Okay, well, obviously it's not because how mean of a boss you are. That's for sure not it. Can you guys help me save my job? Over the next few minutes, I need your guys' help to create some sort of classification model that's going to be able to predict whether employees are going to stay or whether they're going to leave and what may be the leading contributing factors to them leaving. Please guys, you saw how mean that guy was? I really need your help on this one. So it turns out that we actually work for IBM and that our HR data is already on Kaggle, so wow. Kind of a crazy experience there, but we can go ahead and look at this Kaggle data set. I'll have the link to this data set in the resources section in the description down below. So definitely click on resources and I'll take you to a page, drop off your email, and then you will get the code as well as the data. So here is all of the uh, data right here. We have the age, attrition. Now attrition just means whether they stay with the company or left the company. Um, how often they have to travel, their daily rate. I'm not entirely sure. I guess that's how much they make. Uh, the department, what department they're in, the distance from home, their education, um, the, I guess, how early they were in getting hired, the environment, satisfaction, the gender, the hourly rate, the job involvement, the job level, the job role, the job satisfaction, marital status, monthly income, monthly rate, yada, yada, over 18, overtime, uh, stuff like that. We have basically have a bunch of categories. Um, as well as some numeric values down here, I guess like total working years and stuff like that. And we're going to try to use those to create a machine learning model that would be able to predict if someone's likely to stay at this company or likely to leave this company. And that's basically something called binary classification. We're predicting whether they're going to be zero, they're going to be staying, or one, they're going to be leaving, okay? That is the project that we're going to help our guy out so that they don't get fired. So we know we need to make a binary classification machine learning model, and there's lots of different ways you can do this. You could build this actually in Excel using logistic regression. You could do it in Python, you could do it in R, you could do a lot of different combinations, and there's tons of different algorithms as well. And it's hard to know which one would perform best without doing some exploratory data analysis. But once again, I am doing 30% data science projects in 30 days, so I'm a little stressed for time. So we're going to use a tool that's going to make it really easy to choose what model to do, and that is called PyCare. I like PyCarrot because it is auto ML. Basically, it helps us create this model very quickly with just a few lines of code. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to use PyCarrot to do a classification model and actually see how well it would predict the, on this data. And just because I wanna give the people, you guys, as much variety and experience as I possibly can, we're going to be using Google Colab for today's IDE. It is totally free. You just need to go to colab.research.google.com. It is owned by Google. And it's basically a browser-based, cloud-based uh, IDE that's very similar to Jupyter Notebook. It's not my favorite, but hey, I'm giving you experience to something that you maybe haven't seen before. So in the first cell, we need to install PyCarrot because it does not come with Colab. So we're going to pip install it. And we also need to pip install Markup Safe Place. Uh, Markup Safe, I don't necessarily know why. I just ran into an error. I figured it out on Stack Overflow and this fixed my error. So install both of these using pip. If you're in Google Colab, you're going to add an exclamation in front of it so it runs to this cloud's terminal, basically. While that's installing, another thing that you can do is click on the files and click on this little guy right here, which will upload a CSV. We need to get access to our data. My data is called attrition underscore data. I'll have the link to the data in the resources tab. Make sure you click there, sign up for your email. You'll get access to this project, all the code, all the data, as well as 29 other data science projects. So I'm gonna hit open. One of the hard things about Google Colab is it does not keep your data like DeepNote does. So I like DeepNote a little bit better. That's what this is saying right here is, hey, this is gonna be deleted once you like disconnect from this, which is basically when you close your browser. Just hit okay and then that data will appear on the left-hand side. That pip install finally finished. It should take around five minutes. And we can move on to this one right here, which is basically going to import uh, this thing called Enable Colab, which tells PyCarrot that we're in Colab and that it should be knowing that we're in Colab. You'll see why here in a second. The next step we want to do is just load in the data. So we're using pandas. We're just going to use the read CSV and get that attrition data and name it data set. The next two steps would be to split the data into testing and training. So we can use this right here, the sample, the random state and the fraction. So we're doing 5% for testing. That is a little low, but that's fine. And basically we can run that and just get the testing and training. The uh, unseen is going to be the testing and data is going to be the training. And then the thing I wanted to do is just 
look at the training data and see how many people stayed with the company. So 83% of the people stay with the company. So meaning if we created a model that just said, everyone's going to stay at the company, that's, that's the model. That's everyone's going to stay at the company. We'd be 83% accurate because we'd guess we'd get 83% of them, right. And we'd miss these other ones, but that's the number we have to beat. Okay. We have to be 83. Otherwise we just say, Hey, everyone's going to stay and we're 83% accurate. And that would be that. So 83 is the number to beat. The next code we write is importing the classification module from PyCaret and setting it all up. You say the data is equal to the data. The target is the attribution, right? That's what we looked up here. That's yes or no if they stayed. And we can go ahead and hit run and you'll see that basically it does a bunch of stuff right here. It's gonna show you all this different type data types. These are the columns and how it's reading in those datas. We might wanna look at that very carefully for the video's sake, we're not going to right now. And we're gonna go ahead and press enter and that will actually like run everything get it all set up so that in the next section right here, we can run my all time favorite line of code. Probably. I love this from PyCaret. Just compare models and just hit enter and watch. It's going to go and do like a bajillion different calculations. It's going to run through all these different classification models and algorithms and decide which one's the best for us. It's going to give us the accuracy, the AUC, all the accuracy metrics that we want all in one place with one line of code. Now we will have to like hyper tune these if we want these to be really, really good and really correct. This is a great start to give us an idea of what algorithm might work best and how to go from there. Okay, check this out. I just finished running. It maybe took two minutes, one minute to run. And it gave us all these different models, the linear discriminant analysis, ridge classifier, um, Nave buys, uh, quadrant. I don't even know all these <laughs> K neighbors, right? That's the one that I'm most familiar with. Random forest, add a boost, gradient boosting, logistic regression is another one. And you can click this guy right here and it'll turn it into this table where you can sort things. And so you see that the linear discriminant analysis actually had the highest accuracy. Now we have all these other uh, accuracies and metrics for classification that we need to worry about. For the sake of today's video, we're just gonna go off accuracy and see that the LDA had the highest accuracy of 0.871. So that was basically 87% accurate. Our model to beat was 83. So it does look like we have a model that could potentially uh, outperform just saying that everyone stays at the company. Not by much, only that 4%, but that 4% might be worth a lot if you can actually try to save them and intervene and, and keep those people at the company. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this linear discriminant analysis right now. So I wanna create this LDA model on its own. I'm gonna call it model. I just said create model LDA. And then I'm also gonna plot, and I need to fix this right here, the model's feature importance. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and that'll give me like a little bar chart of basically what features, what columns are the most important in my prediction. So you see that the bigger the number here, the more important that variable is. So years with current manager, if you're at 12, that is a big indicator, okay? Um, if you look at the overtime, you know, like do they get paid overtime? Uh, training times last year is zero. If you're not getting training, that's a big indicator. So these are some indicators that might, we might be able to intervene with and try to like help people not leave. Maybe we give them a new manager or maybe we give them overtime or maybe we give them training, stuff like that. We can also go ahead and take a look at what we call our confusion matrix. Our confusion matrix is basically a way of seeing what we predicted right and what we predicted wrong. So 331 of the times we predicted that it was going to be a no, that they would stay at the company and it was true. But sometimes we predicted that they would stay at the company and they actually left. That would happen 19 times. We predicted that they would leave 35 times and they did leave 35 times. And then we predicted they'd leave 34 times and they actually stayed those 34 times. So we'd have to think through, you know, what are the pros and cons of all of this? If, if you think someone's going to leave and you give them some extra benefits and they end up staying, like that's, that's good, right? If they're going to stay anyways, is that really a big problem? I'm not entirely sure. So you have to talk and think through like as an HR person, as a company, does it make sense? How much money are we spending to try to keep these people? But this, this decision or yeah, this confusion matrix can basically help you decide, you know, what's the worth and is, is this type of thing worth it? The last thing I want to do is just take the data we have, the model we created and run it on the unseen data, predict it. So we're going to make some unseen predictions and basically see how accurate that was. So we we're going to look at the attribution or sorry, attrition versus the label, which comes from the unseen prediction and see how accurate we are on this unseen data. And you can see we're still at 87, 88%. So that means even on the unseen data, 
this this uh, model worked well. Now we have to be careful and go through and actually look what's in that model because we could have just predicted all no's. That could have definitely happened and they all are no's. So we want to make sure that we're like we're sampling in sample and out of sample. But that's too much for today's discussion. We're going to be happy with what we've got. We basically created an HR model that would be able to predict uh, attrition or them staying at the company. We can give this back to our boss and not get fired. If you guys like this video, you might like these videos. Make sure you get the data and the code and the link in the description down below. Make sure you hit subscribe and that's it. Bye.